It's time once again for an update from the City of New Hope. And the mayor is with us, Kathy Hempkin. Welcome, Mayor. How are you today? Just fine, Dave. It's certainly looking like fall out there, isn't it? Yes, but we'll take these warm temperatures for a few more days. We, we have a lot to talk about today, so buckle up and get ready. Let's begin with talk about the budget and the levy. The process continues on. Can you tell us how things are moving along and where we are in the process right now? Well, the, all the department heads have gone through their budgets, and we've got a preliminary levy of 3.4%. Most of that is going to, to wages. Uh, now what will happen is um, it'll come to the council on Monday the 21st. And we will talk to each of the department heads. So we understand, we the council understands the budget. And then uh, if there's any places where we can reduce that further, we will. But when you certify to the state, you have to give them a number that you can't go above. So we won't be able to go above 3.4%, but we could perhaps um, whittle it down a little bit. That 3.4%, it looks like about a 2% to homeowners, their taxes. So there will be a tax increase, but it won't be real large this time. All right, and then the last work on the budget ends up in December. Is that correct when the final decision is made? On December 7th, we uh, actually, the, the final decision has been made the end of September. So we have to certify that into the state. But December 7th is the date that we have the public hearing where people can come in and uh, get the same understanding of the budget that the council is getting tonight. Very good. We'll talk more about that as we get closer to that date. Let's talk elections. Things are picking up right now with some absentee voting happening. What should residents know about the election process now? Well, as of last Friday, uh, they can go into City Hall now any do, anytime between 8 and 4.30. Uh, they fill out a form to request an absentee ballot. They hand that in and they get their absentee ballot right there. They can go to a little booth and fill that out. Uh, they seal it up, put it in an envelope, put it in the ballot box that's there. Now, they will be sending out those absentee ballots um, probably the, the end of September, first week in October. If people want to mail them in, they fill them out, follow the directions fill it out and they can mail it in. If they don't want to mail it in, they can always bring it to City Hall. There's a box outside of City Hall, a slot, they can put it in there. If they bring it to City Hall between 8 and 4.30, they can actually put it in the ballot box themselves. So there's numerous ways to vote. I do want to warn people, don't wait till a week before to get that absentee ballot. They really need to get them as soon as they can. They're looking to uh, do a large portion of the voting this year through absentee. So you, can, you, you can still go to the polls on the 3rd of November if you choose to do that, but there are other ways if you don't want to do that. Very good. NewHopeMN.gov, the place to find out all of the election information in New Hope. Let's move on to the City Services Survey. We've been talking about this in process, and now we have some numbers to talk about. We do. Well, the survey is closed now. It looks like about 80% of the people think the overall quality of services are either good or excellent and 80% think the overall appearance of the city is either good or excellent. For those people that have put their phone number on that survey, uh, the staff is busily calling them back, giving them more information, getting more information from them when needed. So we actually use that survey to tell us where we're doing things right and where we can make improvements. And that's something that will be presented at a upcoming council meeting in its full status so people can see all yes. of the results at that point? Yes, they can. Very good. CARES funding. Let's talk a little bit about the CARES funding and how the city is connected to that and some decisions that are being made. The federal government gave, gave New Hope through Hennepin County $1.6 to be used for uh, things that we had to do because of the pandemic. And so we're working with AEM. That's our financial folks that are doing that. Working with them because the rules are very strict on where we can use the money. Money that we don't use will be sent back to the federal government. So they're working on that. But the problem is those rules change like every other day. And so they're just constantly trying to tweak the, the rules and trying to tweak what we can do with the money. We, it's, we don't have a lot of time. I think we have till the 1st of November to actually ha designate where this money is going. So we'll use what we need and what we can uh, legitimately uh, account for. And the rest will go back if we don't use it all. Very good. Let's move ahead to the Blue Line Coalition. We've talked a little bit about light rail in this area and been keeping people up to date. And we want to keep people up to date on what happened since we last talked. You had a meeting with a very important person in the state of Minnesota. Well, all of the mayors that are affected by the Blue Line 
And there's two of us that the blue line doesn't go through our cities, Brooklyn Center and New Hope. But we're right there, right next to it. So those mayors, all of us, met with the governor via Zoom and talked to him. And what we really wanted is a public statement from him that's saying he supports uh, the blue line, light rail, as opposed to bus transit. And um, so he said he would do that, put a public statement out. We also asked that we could be at the table so that we could be part of the decisions. A lot of money. A lot of tax money has been spent getting ready for that blue line to come through. And on the route that it was going to go through, they've done things like build park and rides. For them to change that alignment at this point is, is expensive. And we don't really want that to happen. But the railroads uh, aren't being very cooperative about having us use their right away. So something is going to get done, but these things take forever. We've been working on this for 30 years, I bet. But we'll get there. It All just right. takes a while. But that was very positive that the governor said that he would uh, also be working with the Met Council, who is the one that really controls this. Very good. Thank you for that update. The judges have been busy at the city related to the rave awards. And tell us about that process and when the winners will be announced. Well, we got more, we got more applications for the rave award this year than we've ever had. So the, the judges went out, they looked at the property where the outside they could look at. The ones that were inside, they did it virtually so they could see the inside of the house. Um, they didn't go inside, they just looked at it virtually. So they picked the winners. Uh, they have not told me who they are, so I don't know, but uh, they all, the winners will actually know by watching the live event on the 28th of September, you know, the, the council meeting, mm -hmm. and then we will deliver the, the prizes to them. They usually get a big rock that, that is engraved. So it's really exciting to see yeah. all the pictures of how much work is being done in people's homes. So that's exciting. Congratulations to the winners who will be announced shortly. Business Networking Group, we want to update people on some of the meetings that are coming up and also talk a little bit about a meeting that just happened. Well, we, <laughs> here again, Dave, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to interview you on this okay. because I, I want I'm you ready. to talk about this. But I just want people to know that the Business Networking Group is still functioning. Uh, we've tried to do it outside a couple of times. The turnout hasn't been real good. The turnout when we do it virtually is a lot better. So we have another meeting coming up on, I know this somewhere. October 7th is what I am Thank seeing. You. Would that be correct? That would be correct. Thank you. We're looking for, for someone to be the uh, spokesperson or the host of that meeting. And when you're hosting these meetings, you don't have to do anything but talk about your business. So with that, you want to talk yeah. about what CCX is doing? Yes, I was honored to be the guest speaker at a recent meeting of the networking group and so gave people a little update on changes that have happened at CCX Media and really changes that have occurred because of changes in the industry. And so we're trying to keep up and different ways to get information to people through the internet and through Facebook. Also talked a little bit about funding, how things are changing with cable subscribers going down. And so some of the things that we're doing here to change it and have different funding mechanisms in place. One of the things we're working with is small businesses and a program to help out small businesses. So I know Brandon and the folks at the networking group have some information about that of ways maybe New Hope businesses could get some extra promotional help because a lot of times that's the first thing to go in someone's budget. So we want to step in and help out if we can. So again, great honor to be part of the group. If, if there's a business out there that isn't part of the group, they can call Brandon Bell, and I think you're going to put the number on the screen for them. And Brandon will get you uh, hooked up so that you can be on the call virtually. Typically, it's 8.30 in the morning uh, in the, the first meeting of the month, and it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon on the second. But a lot of good information uh, is at those meetings and how they can, the businesses can get some help various ways. Very good. We want so to give, support our small businesses. Excellent. Give Brandon a call to find out more about that great group in the city. We want to talk police for a few minutes. Let's talk about a focus group process that is going on. What is the main topic behind this and how is that progressing? Well, our police chief has been doing this for four years. They're, they're facilitating a discussion on police practices and issues. So we know that we have to keep uh, up to date on what's happening. Uh, change our policies, change how we do things. And this has been going on. This is just not a recent thing with them. So uh, the police chief attends those. Speaking of the police chief, he's going to be leaving us the end of uh, September. And we're in the process of, of internally 
uh, getting applications to replace him. So that process takes a, a long time to do, and we're just starting to work on that. But I wanted people out there to know that, that our police department uh, is changing as much as they need to change, when they need to change, to keep up with the times. And they, they do a lot of training, and they look to make sure that the training is effective, and they're trying to keep them just as focused as they can be. We will pass along more information about that focus group process as it comes together. Let's hop over to Public Works. A few things to touch on here. We've talked about the utility bill certification process. You've got some numbers to update residents on and also maybe a few tips about water usage in general. What we have. So this bill, if you will, started at 407,000. It's now down to 264,000. And what that is, is people who haven't paid their utility bill. And that utility bill would be mainly the, the water bill. What happens is sometimes people have a, a leaky faucet, a toilet that's running, and they don't even realize it until they get that bill, and it's very, very high. Mm -hmm. Well, one of the things you have to be paying attention to right now is since people are working from home, the kids are home, uh, they're washing their hands, hopefully more often, uh, they're using the bathroom more often, the dishes are being done more often, so more water is being used. You'll see a slight increase in your water bill because you're using more water. But if you see a large increase, that, that tells you that you've got a different problem. You've got a toilet that's running. Very rarely is the meter off. It's usually there's something happening inside the house. So a, a homeowners might want to just check mm -hmm. every other day or so to see if anything's running. Kids don't always turn the faucet off as well as they should. And <laughs> We really don't want people to have huge water bills. Some and great so advice just, there. Yeah, just keep, keep looking at that. That makes sense. One other public works item, Northwood Parkway. You've got some great news to pass along. Oh, those people, <laughs> those poor people. Finally, Northwood is done. Uh, they're, they're putting in black dirt and some seed now. So be sure you're watering that. They'll get some grass to grow. They, when they do that, they put on a top coat and then they have to wait a year before they put that final coat on. So it, it's done and they can drive on it. It looks very nice, but keep in mind it isn't done done. They're still gonna put another coat on. They just have to let it settle. And that's pretty common for what they do. But, but bless their hearts for those guys who have gone through just the summer of having dirt and dust and, and a mess, but it looks very, very nice now. Very good. Let's move ahead to park and recs. A lot going on as we head into fall. We want to start with dance. What's up with dancers in the city? Well, the dancers are back. Yeah, you know, they're at the ice arena upstairs. Uh, they're doing all the things they need to do to be uh, COVID conscious. They're washing everything. They're keeping the dancers apart. They're keeping participants, uh, parents uh, away so they don't have quite as much many people there. So the kids are glad to be back in the dance classes. They look a little different. The recitals will be probably different. Mm -hmm. What they did this year is they had each group do a recital all by themselves at the community gyms, and then they just kind of put it all together. So it's better than nothing, but it's just not, it's not the same, and someday we might be back to the same. There's lots of stuff happening in Park and Rec, and so I suggest that people go on to the website and see mm -hmm. what's happening. So they, you know, if there's classes or things, football, flag football has started. Um, some of the leagues are winding down like the baseball. The thing I do want to bring out is the movies in the park will be, there will be one this week, Captain Marvel on the 26th. Um, as soon as it gets dark, I imagine that's about 8 o'clock, 7.30. Uh, you do need to pre-register because they need to keep track of how many people are there and how to distance them. Last time we tried this and it rained on our heads, we had about 100 people. Well, the other thing they've added to this, on the 24th of October, they're showing the Adams family. And with that, they're asking families if they'd like to dress up like the Adams family. Of course. Part of <laughs> Halloween. And, but be sure you pre-register. So that is going to start at 6.30. Obviously, it's starting to get dark a little sooner. But it might be really fun to go outside, bring your chairs, but to be sure you pre-register. So the, uh, the website's up there. Go into Park and Rec onto that website and register. All right, and another reason you might want to go to the website is for some seasonal job opportunities. Tell us where the city is looking for some help. 
Well, our community gyms run all year, and we need helpers at the community gyms, some of them to do scheduling, some of them to help get people organized in there. So they're looking for that. They're also looking for part-time people for the warming houses that'll open and those applications are now. So when you go on the website, you can apply for that job now for, for the winter months. It doesn't seem like winters should be that close, but <laughs> it, when you start looking for people, it, it is close. Closer it's coming. And let's Our talk golf, about golf and uh, ice for a minute. Give us an update on those two great facilities. Well, the golf course is still open. I would suggest you don't use a yellow or an orange ball. Uh, they try to get those leaves off there, but you know, it's, some of us don't hit real straight, so that we need those white balls. But the other thing that's happening is we're renting out the back patio. And you can social distance very well out there. They tell you how many people that they can have. There's nice grills out there. You're protected from the rain and the wind. And it's just a, a fun outside event, and it's not very expensive. So that's another place they can, they can go. The ice arena is still doing their thing. They're having the... The kids distance as much as they can. They wipe down the locker rooms. They restrict the number of spectators that can be there. So we're, we're trying to do what we can with the facilities we have, but we're very restricted. And we ask people, please, to, to help us with those restrictions. Understandable. And let's hop over to the pool area for just a minute. Uh, still a lot of activity going on there as they prepare things. And one of the things to point out is lighting around the trails. Some work being done on that right now. <laughs> that's actually kind of a funny story. So they put in the trails, they put in this lovely lighting, and uh, lo and behold, didn't turn it on. It didn't turn on. So then they, they did some tweaking so that it would turn on, but they didn't get it to turn off. So now they've got it. It wasn't a timer, but the timers weren't hooked up right or something. So now it turns on when it's supposed to, it turns off when it's supposed to. And we're kind of asking the neighbors, if it doesn't turn off, you need to call us and let us know because mm -hmm. typically the time it doesn't turn off, we're not there. So we don't know. So feel free to call us and say, hmm, you guys, it didn't turn on till 10 o'clock. That's a little late. Right. And it turned off at six in the morning. That's a, little, <laughs> that's a little too early. So we do need them to call us and let us know when it's working, it's not working. But we think we've got it. We've got, we're doing some training with the folks that run that. So they'll You'll get that down. All right, some fine tuning in process. Let's talk about the farmer's market. Great opportunities coming up, not only for produce, but also for crafts. What is coming up? Well, when the, when the Cooper Craft Fair uh, couldn't happen this year because it's inside and all those people, and so the, farmer, the far farmer's market sort of took it over. They sent out letters to crafters. We had about 20 last Saturday. They're looking that they're going to have more this Saturday. Some of the same ones, some different ones along with that. And that's nine to, nine to one on Saturday at City Hall. There's plenty of places to park. Uh, we do ask that people bring a mask with them and wear it because we want to keep, even though it's outside, we want to keep our vendors safe. And when you're standing right there talking to a vendor, we really want that vendor as well as you as a, a customer to stay safe. So bring a mask with, that'd be helpful. So that's going to be coming Saturday the 29th and again on the 6th of October and then after the 6th we're done. They didn't have corn this week at the farmer's market because uh -huh. darn the corn just didn't develop <laughs> enough. They plant that corn every week they plant corn and that's why they always have fresh good corn every week but what happened is it got a little chilly and the corn didn't didn't do what it's supposed to do so we will have corn on, on this Saturday and they're hoping to have corn on the, the 6th of October also. Very good. Hopefully uh, abundance the next couple of times. If you I hope so. Pass along the In Focus photo contest. We have a deadline fast approaching. We do. That's October. I have to look at my notes again. Uh, 16th, is it? That is what I have. Correct. That's right. Okay. So uh, this is photos that you take in the city of New Hope. It can be of people, places, nature, uh, sunsets, bridges, whatever. But uh, you have until the 16th of October to submit those pictures. You can go online. That's how they want you to, to submit them. And it explains how you do that. And then when that photo contest is over, we'll have judges judge them and we'll give prizes. Very good. Let's move ahead to a few just miscellaneous items in the city. And one has to do with Meadow Lake and a drawdown that may be coming. Give us a little background on this topic. Well, our Meadow Lake is uh, impaired. 
and it's very shallow. And a couple things have happened. One of them, um, people have dumped their minnow buckets with their minnows in Meadow Lake. There aren't any predators in the lake, so the minnows multiply. And so the water, of course, is impaired. It's got too much phosphorus in it. And we get all that icky weed stuff. So they're going to try and draw it out. Well, they had to do a couple things. They sent a guy out in a boat to look at habitats that the turtles are in. So they're trying to help the turtles get into another body of water if they can. Uh, they don't want the turtles to die, of course. Mm -hmm. So they're trying to get them moved or do what they have to do while this drawdown is, is coming. And then there was another person that went out with a net and a big container, and he thought he got about 30,000 of oh. these flathead minnows. So there's a lot of Impressive. minnows in the lake. So as this goes down, it's going to be horribly ugly. I mean, this is, Meadow Lake is so pretty. So it'll be very ugly. Uh, it'll, we're hoping that they'll draw down and that it'll freeze real hard, killing not only um, the life that's there, but some of the, the seeds and the plants that are there so that we'll have a nice clean lake in the spring. Excellent. So just be patient with the ugly. And let's talk about the census for a minute. Uh, a couple last still, moments here for people to get involved. You still have a few more days. One of the things I want to point out is from the federal government, the state gets $2,800 per person that gets counted. And that money goes to roads and bridges and uh, where we put hospitals, where we put clinics. It's really important that people get counted. Last I heard from, from the Met Council or the uh, Hennepin County was we were at 72 to 74%. That means 26% of the people aren't being counted. Mm -hmm. um, it's very safe to get counted. You can do it online. Um, there'll be somebody knocking at your door. And if you don't want that knock at your door, if you haven't, just go online, answer the few questions. You don't have to answer everything, but answer what you, you feel comfortable with. But it's important to get counted. It's important that we get that money. You see that website at the bottom of the screen. Final note you wanted to pass along, Mayor, is a little bit about some scams that are occurring, and you would just want to give residents of New Hope a quick heads up. A heads up. Well, when people are home, guess who comes out? The bad guys. So they're, they're trying to scam people. The, the, the grandparent scam where they call and say, this is your grandchild, send money. Don't send money. Or uh, the IRS is after you, send money. Don't send money. What you should do if you get a scammer, call 911 immediately. Tell them what the scammer said, any information. Uh, better yet, just hang up the phone and then call 911 and tell them. Do not give them your bank account number. Do not give them your social security number. Do not go to the bank and take money out and send it to them. Don't get gift cards and send it to them. All of that stuff is they're trying to take your money and they must be successful because they keep trying. I just don't want New Hope residents to, to fall victim to that. So please just hang up your phone. Uh, really, the IRS is not going to come get you. All right. Well, about 20 plus minutes of information today from the mayor. A very busy week. So if you have any other questions or need more information, as always, go to the city's website, newhopemn.gov. Mayor, thanks again for your time. We will talk to you again next week. Thank you, Dave. Learn more about The Connection at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.